Let's take a look at the allowance method to account for uncollectible accounts. Remember, the allowance method is the method that is recommended by GAAP. Whenever companies use the allowance method, what they do is they take their credit sales and estimate how much of those credit sales will be uncollectible. The estimate of uncollectibles is typically based on industry standard or the company's own collection history. Let's take a look at this example. It says credit sales for the company was $150,000 for 2012. Customer collections were $50,000 for 2012. And uncollectible account expenses was estimated to be $5,000 for 2012. Let's first look at the first two transactions. For credit sales, two accounts involved were accounts receivable and revenue. So what you're going to do is you're going to debit accounts receivable, credit revenues for $150,000. we are going to assume that the opening balance of accounts receivable is zero. Next, for collections of $50,000, what you're going to do is you're going to debit cash for $50,000 and credit accounts receivable for $50,000. Those are the basic journal entries for your credit sales and customer collections. Now next, let's look at the third thing. It says uncollectible account expense was estimated to be $5,000 for 2012. Whenever a company is using the allowance method, you have to set up two new accounts. The two new accounts are allowance for uncollectible accounts and the uncollectible account expense. What companies do is they will debit the uncollectible account expense account and credit the allowance for uncollectible accounts for the amount of the estimate. Again, to summarize, a company has to estimate the amount of uncollectible accounts and then they have to debit the uncollectible account expense and credit the allowance for uncollectible accounts. Let's take a little bit more detailed look at the allowance account. The allowance account is a contra asset account. You've seen contra asset accounts before. Accumulated depreciation was a contra asset account. The contra asset account is a companion account for your accounts receivable. A contra asset account always has a normal credit balance. You know that asset accounts have a normal debit balance. Contra asset accounts have a normal credit balance. So the normal balance of the allowance for uncollectible accounts is a credit balance. It is a permanent account, so it does appear on your balance sheet right alongside your accounts receivable. The allowance for uncollectible accounts has a beginning balance. Let's assume it's zero and an ending balance, which after adjusting for the expense, it's $5,000. Your accounts receivable now will have $150,000, which was your credit sales, and $50,000, which was your collections. Notice how the uncollectible account expense does not touch the accounts receivable. The only possible journal entry using the allowance method is to debit an uncollectible account expense and credit your allowance account. The uncollectible account expense account is an expense, therefore it will be reported in your income statement. So you'll have your revenues, your expenses, and under your expense, you will have an uncollectible account expense for 5000 this supports the matching principle. You've made credit sales. This uncollectible account expense is an expense that's relating to your credit sales. Therefore, we are showing it in the period that it was incurred, which is the same period that the revenues were earned. So the allowance method supports the matching principle. Your accounts receivable and your allowance account will be shown on your balance sheet. And here are two possible ways that it will be shown on your balance sheet. The first method is sometimes companies will show it as accounts receivable, 100,000, less allowance on collectible accounts, 5,000, and they will call it accounts receivable net of 95,000.
Uh, sometimes they will show it as accounts receivable less allowance of 5,000, 95,000. The 95,000 is called the net realizable value. So sometimes your questions will ask you, what is the net realizable value? To calculate your net realizable value, you have to take your accounts receivable balance and subtract the balance in your allowance for uncollectible accounts. To look at it another way, the accounts receivable balance shows you the amounts that are due to you from customers. The allowance for uncollectible accounts show you the amount that you expect not to collect from your customers. So the accounts receivable net or the net realizable value is the amount that you can realistically expect to collect from all your customers. Now when we're using the allowance method, we said that companies use estimates to calculate the amount of the uncollectible account expense. Companies use two methods to come up with this estimate. The first method is called percentage of sales and the second method is called aging of receivables and let's take a look at, look at that next. We, when we use the allowance method the two accounts that are involved are the allowance for uncollectible accounts which is a contra asset that's a balance sheet account it will have a beginning balance and an ending balance and then the uncollectible account expense which is an expense account. The expense is calculated by two methods. Once we calculate it, we debit your expense and you credit your allowance for uncollectible accounts. Sometimes your questions will call it the adjusting entry. It is an adjusting entry because it's not a transaction that occurs. It is an adjustment to make your balance sheet accounts more accurate. Therefore, it is an adjusting entry we do at the end of the period with your other adjusting entries. We said that there were two methods that companies use to calculate their expense. First is the percentage of sales and the second one is aging of receivables. Let's take a look at the percentage of sales method. The percentage of sales method will look at your credit sales in the past and determine a certain percentage of sales that will be uncollectible. Let's say that a company assumed that 1% of your sales are uncollectible. If you made $100,000, that means $1,000 of your sales is uncollectible. The company will then debit uncollectible account expense for $1,000 and credit allowance for uncollectible accounts for $1,000. So whenever you're doing your questions, if a company is using the percentage of sales method the number that they are giving you or the number that you're required to calculate is the expense. If the company is using the percentage of sales method, the number you come up with is the expense. And then all you have to do is debit the uncollectible account expense and credit the allowance for uncollectible accounts. Then you can calculate what your ending balance is. The second method is the aging of receivables. If the company is using aging of receivables and they give you a number, that number that they give you is the ending balance in your allowance account. Typically questions will say that a company used an aging schedule to calculate uncollectible accounts and they decided that the uncollectible accounts were $10,000. If they give you $10,000 using the aging of receivables, you will put that $10,000 as your ending balance in your allowance account. Then to figure out how much your expense is for the current year, you've got to work backwards. So you take your ending balance, you subtract your beginning balance, and that will be the expense for the year. This is the section that confuses most students. If you remember that if the company is using percentage of sales method, the number that they're giving you is the actual expense. If they're using the aging of receivables, the number that they're giving you 
is the amount they estimate that they will not be able to collect, which is the ending balance, and then you have to work backwards to calculate your expense for the year. Now let's take a look at when there is an actual write-off. Remember, a write-off is where a company decides that they will never be able to collect an amount from a customer. Then they have to write it off. How do they write off when we're using the allowance method? When we're using the allowance method, the write-off is you are going to debit your allowance for uncollectible accounts for the amount of write-off and you're going to credit your accounts receivable. So when you look at your allowance account, what it's going to have is a beginning balance, the expense gets credited, the write-offs get debited to your allowance account and then you have your ending balance. The write-off is the only possible debit for your allowance for uncollectible accounts. Be sure to go look at the demo docs because that will work through an example. If there are multiple requirements, be sure to look at each requirement. And we will go through several examples in class.